What is going on everyone? It's Mr. Uzi here and in case you missed it, Apple has gone ahead and updated their 2018 line of smartphones to include three new devices, all of which do not have a Touch ID button, those being the iPhone XR, XS, and XS Max. Today, we'll be taking a look at the iPhone XS. The overall unboxing experience for the iPhone XS was a little lackluster. They do mention that the phone is capable of fast charging, but once again, they don't include a fast charger in the box, which at this point, for a $1,000 phone, I really think that it should include one at the very least. I know Apple doesn't want to adopt Type-C, but come on now. Like, it's a really expensive phone. Adding that adapter in wouldn't really offset the cost that much. Not to mention that with the 10s, they also removed the Lightning to 3.5 millimeter headphone adapter, which you now have to buy from the Apple store or a retailer for like 10 to $15. So fast charger, no headphone adapter. I think they could have sprung the extra little bit of money to put the fast charger in there at the very least, especially for people who don't have iPhone 10s, 8s, or 7s that did come with the adapter. For me, I came from a 6S, I've been using a headphone jack. So I now have to go out and buy an adapter for a phone that I just bought. Not, you know, having that adapter really is kind of an inconvenience when I have to go out to the store to buy it or wait days for it to be shipped to me. The iPhone XS is another one of Apple's S models, meaning there won't be any significant design changes between it and its predecessor, the iPhone X. It's more of an incremental upgrade. It has a similar body style to the X, so if you've seen one, you've kind of seen an iPhone XS as well. It has an updated 5.8 inch OLED Super Retina display. Apple is claiming that it has more accurate colors and higher dynamic range, but for the average person, you probably won't notice. Blacks are going to be black, the colors are decent, it's still a great display as it was last year. The notch is still there and it doesn't look like we're going to be getting rid of it anytime soon. Looks like it's here to stay. Except, Apple does seem to hide the notch on the box of the iPhone XS with a very deceptive black wallpaper. So, interpret that how you will if Apple actually wants to embrace the notch or they want to act like it's not there. Personally, the notch does seem to go away the more you use the phone. It's still there, but it doesn't impact a lot of the phone's usage, aside from watching video. But again, that was also the case for the iPhone X. The phone still has a glass back and stainless steel frame, so for the space gray version, expect to have fingerprints all over the device within seconds. Uh, we have IP68 water rating instead of IP67 from last year. Uh, it's now good up to two meters for 30 minutes. Wireless charging is back, seemingly for good, and we now have a faster face ID, still no touch ID, and still no headphone jack. Under the hood, we have the new A12 Bionic chip using the new seven nanometer process, the first in a smartphone, well, at least a smartphone that has launched already. Uh, it boasts higher performance, more power efficiency. Uh, the iPhone 10 was no slouch. The 10s is also no slouch. Uh, iOS 12 has a bunch of optimizations to make the phone feel snappy. This also goes for older models. I was coming from an iPhone 6S, which seems to do well on iOS 12. But again, the phone's fast enough to not bother me while using it, so I think that's always a plus. Battery life is still going to be passable. It'll get you through the day. I usually get anywhere from four to four and a half hours of screen on time. So you may want to opt for a battery pack if you need a little more juice or opt for the 10s Max because it does have a larger battery. The cameras on the 10s were improved as well. The sensors have increased pixel size to allow for better low light imaging. And they also include optical image stabilization on both the telephoto and wide angle lenses. Now, they are also including smart HDR, which allows for better dynamic range in photos. And overall portrait mode looks like it has been upgraded from the iPhone 10. Uh, some of the smoothing on the face edges and edges of certain objects are a little bit better. And a lot of this seems that it can be fixed now in software rather than having to upgrade or overhaul the entire camera module. I will say, however, at this moment uh, filming the video, there is a very heavy skin smoothening effect when using portrait mode. I'm not sure if that's something that could be tweaked in software. Hopefully it can. It's very aggressive, so it may not be exactly what you're looking for. You may like it, but this is going to depend on your personal taste when it comes to those kinds of photos. So at this point, I've been using the iPhone XS for the past week. Uh, some things that I can definitely say stood out, it's slippery like it's really slippery like there are several instances where i didn't feel comfortable holding the phone without a case the glass back stainless steel sides definitely feel like you're, you're gonna drop it at some point so inevitably i did end up putting a case on it uh one other thing is that i've actually held out for such a long time without having to deal with the whole 
uh, lightning versus headphone jack uh, fiasco of the past couple years. So I did have to go out and buy an adapter that allows me to charge and listen to music at the same time because my car doesn't support Bluetooth. Um, so, you know, there's that. So what are the takeaways from this video? If you are rocking an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 10 at this point in time, uh, and you are thinking about upgrading to the iPhone 10s, my solid recommendation is to not. You won't be getting that much to justify spending an extra thousand dollars, assuming you're able to sell your previous phone for maybe a few hundred, two, three, four hundred dollars, you can offset the cost, but I still don't think it's worth that investment for people who jumped right into it last year. Now, if you're coming from an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 6S or an iPhone 6, I do think that there is some merit to upgrading to the iPhone XS. Keep in mind though, regardless of where you're upgrading from, the phone will still cost $1,000. Anyway guys, thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know in the comments below what you think about still having $1,000 smartphones out on the market and if they're even worth buying at $1,000. Also, if you did pick up the iPhone XS, or maybe you didn't because you didn't think it was worth it. Let me know all that in the comments below. That'll be it for this video. Be sure to hit that bell notification because it looks like subscribers aren't actually getting videos pushed to their sub boxes once again. Um, so be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification to be notified when new videos come out. Anyway, I think that's it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.